When peace like a river attendeth my way. I love God from a kid. I love the things of God. I mean, reading the Bible for me was really like a joy, you know, because the Bible incorporated romance and, you know, <laughs> there was action and adventure. I grew up in Miami, Florida in a Caribbean apostolic church. And I think people are familiar with the black apostolic um, Pentecostal church experience is very charismatic. People are dancing. They're what we call in the spirit. They're catching the Holy Ghost. People are speaking in tongues. But when you add the Caribbean culture to that, it's on a whole nother level. Church was family to me, but it also was a place of fear. And it was a place of condemnation for me. It's the place where I learned to love God and understand the goodness of God and the beauty of humanity, but also the place that probably ironically did the most damage to me in my life and a place where I felt less my whole self. Because I knew very, very young that I was a lover of men. Even at that age, I couldn't articulate how something as innocent as you know, for me, because I'm a kid, I, I have no sexual desire at this time, you know, this, this was just a pure, innocent desire to be loved and to love in an intimate way with another man. I couldn't understand why I would be punished for that. We had a really um, young and charismatic bishop. He did a message called, Who's In and Who's Out? And he made a declaration as many you know preachers do that these are the last days and that Jesus is coming soon and everybody needs to get their house in order you know you adulterer you fornicator you homosexuals you're not gonna make it you're not gonna be in and I remember that impacted me so severely like this God that I love doesn't accept me for who I am it was really intense for me I made a decision from that point on that if this wasn't the life that God had for me that I was going to have to live another life. And I didn't know how I was going to go about doing that so I did everything I could um, to suppress my feelings. You know, God was my first love and for me right around 15 or 16, I feel like that was really like my first breakup. You know, God and I broke up around that time because I realized this part of me isn't going anywhere. And if this something is something that the God of my understanding cannot accept, then obviously we can't be together. I stopped going to church. My personal feeling about faith is that everybody needs to have a sense of a higher power. That there's something, there's a force, there's an energy uh, living with you, abiding with you, uh, communicating with you. And when you have the absence of that in your life and you really feel like you are out here on your own, you know, I think it creates a waywardness. And that manifested itself in me just kind of letting all of my morals go. Treating my body sacredly became something that wasn't important to me anymore. Treating other people sacredly, understanding that I'm dealing with somebody who, you know, is a creation of God and not just somebody that I can objectify. That wasn't important to me anymore. You know, my morality left when the breakup happened. I was lost. So at some point, you know, after, you know, several failed relationships and having made, you know, a lot of terrible mistakes in my late teens and in my 20s, right around 26, I just decided that it wasn't okay for me to have the void, the spiritual void that I had in my life. And I began to do my own research. I did an exhaustive research, so I read every book that substantiated that homosexuality was indeed a sin, indeed something that was abominable, indeed something that God has declared is evil and wrong. And then I did the opposite. I read books affirming that if you read the Bible really in the original language that it was written in, 
and if you understand the original context of the scriptures that those who condemn homosexuals use against that community, homosexuality wasn't even what we understand it today in the first century when these scriptures were written. And then I read about homosexuality from the African experience and I learned about the Adodi who were an African people who were considered the shamans and the soothsayers in African communities and they were oftentimes gay and transgender people and they were considered two-spirited because they had the essence of men and women and these are people who would perform weddings and who the community would go to when uh, there was sickness in the community it was the voice of somebody else interpreting God's voice that put me in bondage it was the voice of God that freed me you know, there's a phrase that says, God is still speaking. And what God spoke to me was, I created you, and I created you just as you are. And you are a living epistle. Mm -hmm.